run. All right, so Alien Romulus finally dropped. This is a movie that I can't remember a movie I've had more anticipation for in recent memory than this film. I mean, we've covered almost every trailer that they've put out for this movie, including the TV spots we've done creative breakdowns on. So obviously I had a ticket the first night I could uh, to see this film. And I have a lot of thoughts on this on both sides. There's a lot to like, and there's some things that are going to frustrate fans of this series. So we're going to get into all of that. For those that are new to the channel, this is a spoiler free review. So you can safely watch this review and still see the movie should you choose. Um, if you're new to the channel, also please hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications. That helps the channel so much. And thank you to all those who have already done that. Uh, these creative reviews break down the movie in seven different elements. We look at the visuals, the sound, the acting, the directing, the editing, the story, as well as the overall entertainment of the movie. Uh, so let's go through that in that order. But first, let's do a synopsis of the movie, which the trailers did a pretty revealing job of showing what this film is about. You have a group of young individuals who are stuck on a mining planet and are trying to figure out a way to get off this mining planet. They discover that there are cryopods on this space station that is near their planet. And if they can get access to these cryopods, then they can escape to a planet which is X number of years away uh, that they need these cryopods for. So obviously when they get to the space station, all hell breaks loose. You get that from the trailer. Okay, so I'm not spoiling anything there. So let's go through and let's look at these elements and let's start with the things that I think were so well done. And, and it really kicks off with the visuals. Visually, one of the best alien movies. It is so good. The worlds that they built uh, from the, the uh, atmosphere colony processors and the mining colony that these characters have to live in and what that looks like and you just get a sense of that uh, that darkness and that depression and just you get a kind of a glimpse of what life at Hadley's Hope might have been like uh, as well. Um, the set design of the space station is so good and so claustrophobic uh the the miniatures that they use to film a lot of the uh, the scenes um were just so meticulously and beautifully crafted anytime they could use practical effects on camera they did and that was something i knew going into this movie and it made me really excited and the execution was phenomenal the cinematography the lighting both those elements created a film that felt tense, that had intensity, that there was a weight, there was a gravity, pardon the pun, um, to how you felt watching this movie. Uh, and there were several moments in the movie where I jumped up and popcorn was flying out of my, my hand. Visuals were outstanding. The, the look of the aliens was so Good. And once again, because they went back to practical effects. Um, the only downside to the visuals, and this is why I'll mark a point off, and this, this one thing plays into some of the scores later as well, is without revealing too much, they used a certain AI face editing that looks so bad and it is so unnecessary to the to the extent that the actor's mouth is not matching the words it just looks cheap it looks television and it had no real place in this uh so for that that was the only downside to the visuals in in my in my estimation sound the sound was so good from the sound of the aliens walking in the on the metal grates to the sound of the face huggers skittering about to the musical score. The musical score was so good in this movie. And it reminded me so much of the first, you know, honestly, the first three alien movies like 
all three, in my opinion, had really good musical scores. My personal favorite was James Horner's score from Aliens, which sounds a lot like his Star Trek uh, Two: Wrath of Khan score. There's actually they're almost similar uh, tracks. This sounded kind of like a blend between those first two movies, and the score just made this feel grander than than what we've seen from the Alien franchise in in the last few decades. Um, side note, I will say, I actually like the the musical score in Alien 3 as well. Uh, just the way they used the the brass section in that score, I thought was effective. But the, the sound design, the soundtrack, uh, the score of this film, I thought was flawless. Um, now let's look at acting. There was a lot of concern leading up to this movie that the young cast was going to feel annoying and it's going to feel out of place in the alien universe. Um, and I, I had my hesitations, but also, yeah, young people exist. I, I don't know how you can just completely ignore that and only have people over a certain age range, uh, be a character in this film or in any of these films. I mean, look at how successful the alien isolation game was, and that dealt with a young character. Um, that being said, the characters and the actors portraying the characters in this movie did not do a good job uh, with, with one exception. Most of the characters are very bland, very boring, very unlikable, and very one note. They're they're monotoned. You like you have a guy who's the jerk. That's his whole identity, the jerk. So it's like, okay, I don't really root for you. You have the jerk's girlfriend, who's also kind of a jerk. I don't root for you either. Then you have the pregnant one, who her entire persona, her entire identity is she's the pregnant one. And that's about as deep as it gets in any of these characters. And you cannot have an emotional stake or investment in any of these characters because they just weren't played well. And you really have to question, were they not played well because the actors were not good or were not good in these roles, which I would argue some were not, or were the characters written poorly? And I think it's a little bit of both. I don't think these were well-written characters that had really anything of interest or substance or value. Do you remember how much you cared about all the characters in the original Alien film? You you got to know them, their their motivations, what what uh, what inspired them, what drove them to do the things that they did. And so when things happened to them, you felt something. You don't really have that. In this movie, you have a bunch of unlikable characters who don't really seem to do much until they are off. And then you come to the two lead actors. You have Kaylee Spaney, who played Rain. Okay. There wasn't much there either. She was confused when she needed to be confused. She was scared when she needed to be scared. And then all of a sudden she's a badass. There wasn't really much of an arc there for her. There wasn't a lot of lessons learned, a lot of having to step up to the, to the challenge and overcome an obstacle. She just kind of did what the script needed her to do. Wasn't that impressed with her. Um, and that, you know, you may disagree with that and that's okay. Uh, but the one universal thing that I've heard and that I believe as well is uh, David Johnson's character. Uh, he played the android. Unbelievable. Breathtaking in every scene. Just so mesmerizing how good he was at portraying the android in this film. And once again, without giving spoilers, he had two very contrasting tones to his delivery and to his presentation and how he could go back and forth between the two, I thought was absolutely superb. I mean, anytime he was in the on, on screen, which was a majority of the movie, anytime he was on screen, he was crushing it. Okay, so now let's look at directing. Um, you know, it's there's so much that overlaps in the movie where you're not sure, was this a story issue? Was this a directing issue? Was this studio interference? Um, you know, so I have to kind of look at, okay, the visuals were excellent. The sound was excellent. 
did we pull as much out of these actors as possible? I don't think we did. I think we left a lot on the table. And also, it's very clear that there was studio interference in regards to what had to be included, what was necessary to be a part of this film in regards to the 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 canonization of the alien lore. Um, and I think it, it hurt the movie a little bit. Um, and I'll kind of loop editing into that as well. I thought editing was fine. It did it 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 didn't add to it. Didn't pull away from the movie. Uh, there was nothing done in the editing where I was like, "Oh, that I don't like what is happening here." Like you know, contrast that to like let's say a movie like Alien versus Predator Requiem, where you can't see anything the entire movie. This is a very clear movie, and the visuals are are done exceptionally well. Um, and there's nothing necessarily in the editing that eliminates that tension. Um, so looking at story and script, well, this is the big problem with the movie. And probably the biggest problem with the movie is the story and script didn't really deliver as much as you would want it to. Uh, and the example I will give is without spoilers, there's a exposition tool used in this movie that it's, it's so, in my opinion, insulting to an audience that you constantly have to explain what's going on and tie in past movies and try to just really spell out everything so the audience doesn't have any questions and there's no ambiguity. It removes so much of what is exciting about learning things in a movie as characters are discovering them when you're just going to say, all right, I'm just going to sit here and just tell you everything that happened before on this ship, everything that is happening right now, everything that's going to happen, we're just going to explain it to you so there's no question about that. It sours the movie, in my in my opinion. Um, the third act, I really think the movie shifts gears a lot, and I don't think for the better. Um, and without giving spoilers, which is difficult to do, but I'm not going to, the aliens don't hold as big of a threat as they did in the first two acts. And that is frustrating for a fan of the franchise to build up this ultimate being, the ultimate predator, the ultimate hunter, the perfect life form. And then to have them play a secondary role in the climax of the movie. It felt cheap in an alien movie. And that I found that frustrating. Um, so was this movie entertaining? Yeah, it was. Now, you, you may think, well, James, you've been kind of hard on this movie. I think when we look at the entire uh, timeline of alien movies, we've had two arguably perfect alien movies, an alien and aliens. And Alien 3 actually, in my opinion, holds up as a really good entry. I don't like it in the actual storyline of Alien, Aliens, and Alien 3. I don't care what they did for the characters Hicks and Newt. I would have uh, preferred something else, kind of like what Neil Blomkamp was uh, suggesting in his approach or what um, the Alien 3 original screenplay, uh, which you can listen to the audiobook. It's, it's a fun listen, uh, kind of the direction that was taking. But that being said, there was a lot about Alien 3 I really enjoyed. And I would put Alien Romulus kind of right up there with Alien 3. Maybe I enjoyed Alien 3 a little bit more, um, felt a little bit more tension and, and scariness in Alien 3. But Alien Romulus, it was good. It was good. It was good. I just wished it was great. I wished it was great. I wish it was excellent. I wish there wasn't the studio interference that clearly impacted the story. Uh, I wish the characters actually had some human elements to them. I mean, the most human character in the movie was the android, ironically. Um, 
we should hold our alien movies up to a high standard because we've been shown that you can make excellence with alien with aliens and waiting since 1986 is a long time to wait we're almost up on 40 years to wait for another amazing entry into the alien franchise but this was a good entry into the alien franchise this was a hopeful entry into the alien franchise this reinvigorated my excitement about the alien franchise because we haven't had anything good in the alien franchise in 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 recent memory really and what this does is this keeps the interest and the momentum going for the upcoming alien tv show which noah hawley is is running the show on that and he has the um has the background of running all all the Fargo seasons. So I'm actually really excited about his entry into this as well. Um, So how does it score? Well, visuals, 9 out of 10. The only uh, mark I'll give against visuals is the AI that they were using for the one character. Uh, Sound, 10 out of 10. Acting, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. If it weren't for David Johnson's character in this movie, acting would have been a four out of 10, but his character alone was enough to bump that up three points. Directing and editing, I'll both give eight out of 10. Story and script, this was where it struggled the most. Uh, And there wasn't much you could do to save it. And this really comes into studio interference um, and just poorly developed characters. That's a six out of 10. But entertainment, it was a fun movie. It was, there was a lot of fun in this movie. The one other down thing I'll say that I think is worth noting is they squeezed in a lot of Easter eggs throughout the movie, so fans will really like it. That being said, they went too far with the dialogue in the movie and they shoehorn in a lot of the iconic lines we've heard in past Alien movies, only being said by new actors who are really trying to force it and put their own spin on these lines that they should not know have any impact. Um, It was cringy to have that. Um, But overall, this was a decent movie. So I give entertainment a seven out of 10. That's a score of 55 out of 70. That's a 78%. Hey, it's a C plus. And that's why I thought walking out. I was like, I enjoyed it. That's a C plus movie. I might want to watch it again uh, just to see what other Easter eggs I can pick up from it. Um, And, you know, could have wanted more. Okay, fine. But I, I like that we were given something that was better than what we've had for several decades. So there you go. Let me know what your thoughts are in the in the comment section below. If you had a chance to see it, what what your thoughts were on on this movie, um, if you were as excited as I was, and then what your thoughts are on the upcoming Alien TV show, which is really like they've wrapped filming on that, uh, as far as I know. So they're in post production on that. So that's going to happen soon, and could not happen soon enough, in my opinion. So. That's it from me. Catch you in the next screening. We'll talk to you all soon. Take care.